This is a DeckScreener.com tutorial. I'm going to show you exactly how to use DeckScreener, all of the important kind of buttons and navigation, and then I'm going to show you the best bits of data you need when making buying and selling decisions. DeckScreener is a platform that automatically picks up new launches of meme coins on most blockchains, but not all of them. So let me show you some of the blockchains here. So if you come here on the main page, if you click on the uh, logo there, this is literally what you'll see. You'll see the trending tokens at the moment. You probably see an ad on the top. Click on filters here on the right hand side. When you click on the platforms, you can actually see which ones are included. So a lot of different platforms, not all of them, but a lot. Now, most of these platforms, you don't want to go anywhere near because there's no volume. Volume is what moves markets um, in, in, in any kind of market, in a, definitely within cryptocurrency and more so within meme coins. The main ones tend to be Ethereum, Solana, uh, Binance, and Avalanche. They tend to be the main ones. Also, you get a little bit of uh, Arbitrum as well, et cetera, but we're not going to talk about that today. We're going to focus on Solana because that's one of the best ones when it comes to buying and selling because you can maximize your profits and there's a lot of volume on this chain. So, for example, if you click it now and click save, we will only see all of those collections that are on Solana. And if you see forward slash soul, that means the meme coins on Solana. The first four in terms of letters, that's basically the ticker symbol. So that's their symbol. It's almost like a stock trading symbol for that particular meme coin. And then the actual name is the one you see on the right. So for example, GME is the ticker and the name is GameStop. And this is one of the most popular ones. And forward slash soul means it's on the Solana blockchain. Whereas we have lots of different blockchains as mentioned already. On the left hand side here, we have watch list, alerts, multi charts, new pairs, gainers and losers, portfolio and news. And to be honest, a lot of these I don't use. The main ones I use are new pairs. Sometimes I have a watch list if there's stuff I'm still watching. Um, but, you know, in the moment, I just open new tabs, <laughs> to be honest with you, for all of the collections that I'm watching right now. I find that easier because then you get a nice big chart. But if you wanted to, you click on multi charts here. And then what you can do is you can add, for example, I had some of these open the other day and I can click on a new chart and then I can add whichever one I want. So for example, GME, I can type in here and then click on the first one and then I can add the chart for GME, which is here on the right. I find it's not that useful because the charts are too small. And also, if you're that amazing that you can literally in real time trade three or four different um, meme coins at the same time, for example, during an initial phase of launch, then you don't need to be watching my tutorial. You're just too amazing. <laughs> but I don't know anybody, any human being who can really do that because you have to be so quick with your trades that really only concentrating on one collection, I highly recommend. Unless you're doing a wave three strategy where it's longer term uh, buys and sells that you're doing. You're just generally investing, hoping to hold for hours to days. But if you're trading live, like I do a lot, where I'm looking to flip within 15 minutes, I don't want to be watching two collections because suddenly I'm, I'm, I, I take my eye off it and one of them collapses. Or one of them goes up really high and I forget to take profits. So multi charts, I don't tend to use that much. Gainers and losers, same as a, a kind of trending here, but they set their own filters at the top. So you can click here on losers, for example, and you'll find the ones that are dipping the most. And you can see they separate it by five minute time frame, one hour, six hour, 24 hour. I don't tend to mess about with these much uh, either. I basically just want to find a particular coin that might be interesting, like GameStop. And it doesn't matter how I set the filters to find it, I'm, I'm, I just end up finding the same thing. It's only once I open that in a new tab that my analysis really starts. So how do you find these coins where that's not that difficult? You just click on new pairs and you'll see that they're launching all the time. Just sort by age here and you'll see the new ones launching to the old one. And this is pretty much everything that's launched today. Anything that are rugs or scams are usually not on this list anymore. And there are a lot of rugs and scams. And if you want to filter by the most recent ones, click on age here and click on less than one hour. And then you literally get stuff that's launched seconds ago. So that would be the fastest way to do it. Now, if you want to over filter and only, uh, let's say you're looking for a wave three setup. So basically this is a more established meme coin that's been doing well for 12 to 24 hours. And you want to see if it kicks on to like 10 million, 20 million. It's already at 0 0.5 million, something like that. So all you need to do here is we'll forget about age. So we could do 24 hours, which is fine. Um, but we can start messing about with liquidity because we want a, a collection that has a, a bit of a market cap. So it has a good pool of liquidity. So we want to go over 50 for liquidity. And then we can filter again and add the platform Solana. So we click here on Solana, for example. 
click apply and then we can see them and you can see there's not that many to pick so these are all hopefully half decent collections even in these there'll be the odd scam collection and it's easy to spot those when you just look on the chart but anyway let's let's open one or two of these so we can we can learn more so this one's called cross socks croc socks sorry um crocs was a very popular one recently so they're just playing off that almost like a derivative i can see here they don't have socials in the top right and the liquidity is not locked so i'm already nervous about this collection so i would kind of walk away from that um if i'm having a look further down here let me see if there's anything else so let's open a, a couple of these see if any actual legitimate collection this looks legitimate it's got locked liquidity uh well it says 87 percent, so they still have to burn some but generally locked liquidity it's got the social on the top right and this is wall street bet solana so it looks like it launched today actually uh, about mm, about seven hours ago six seven hours ago change this to market cap you can see the price and even the dollars you can change to solana if you want to i prefer to do dollars and i prefer to do market cap because then it's easy round numbers in general. So I find now that it's in market cap and dollars, uh, I can see it a lot better. I prefer to put the volume at the bottom. If you want to add indicators, it's very easy to do. So all you do is you go here at the top where it says FX, uh, or it might say indicators if yours is zoomed in a little bit. And then you can actually choose and you can choose from all of these indicators because Tech Screener uses trading view charts, which I use all the time, find it very, very useful. So pick whichever indicator you like and you're comfortable with. And I've just added volume here, so simple volume. So you can find it there and just click on it and then add it below. Volume, really important when it comes to meme coin trading. So make sure you learn about that. By the way, if you're enjoying the video, uh, please hit the like button. It's really good for me to know which kind of videos are useful for you all. So here, let's just navigate uh, the rest of the page. So here in the top right, we've seen the ticker again. We see the name at the top. And if we click these three dots, we can actually move away the sidebar, which I usually do when once I'm on the chart, once I've summarizes information these the price in usd like this 0, 0.00 we never care about this price in sol we never care about liquidity i don't really care about i just glance at it to see whether it's worthwhile even having a look at so if this is like liquidity 1000 or lower i'm not interested and also if i don't see the green lock sign i'm generally not interested even though there are times i degen into trades but that's because i almost know that they're not going to rug the collection yet <laughs> until it gets to a certain level i know it sounds bad but basically you can still make money even before these idiots um uh, rug but anyway market cap is here and this is a number people talk about all the time when they're like oh uh, gamestop got to 80 million in market cap this is the number they're talking about so that's the aggregate kind of figure value of the collection now if you look lower you can see here five minute one hour six hour 24 hour trending don't usually mess about with these three. I like the five minute one because I don't want the volume to drop too low. So it's a good way for me to check quickly that yes, the volume in the last five minutes has 20,000. That's not bad. But look at the bars at the bottom. They're going down. Don't like that because then the price usually tends to go down as well. We want to see the volume bars picking up or at least staying the same. That's just a little trading tip there. Scroll down. If you click on watch list, I can actually add this to my main watch list now. So you can label your watch list if you want to. So you just click here and then it adds. Same for alerts. You can actually enable uh, alerts if you want to. I never usually mess about with that because like I said, if I'm interested in a collection and it's short term, I'm interested. I do my trade. It takes 15, 20 minutes, maybe half an hour or a little bit longer. And then I close the chart because I'm, I don't care anymore. So I've already closed my position. Maybe I've made a small loss, maybe a small win. Maybe I've made a massive win on the trade. Who knows? We, that's the next step. Here, if you click on trade on Radium and then I click on the open a new browser, this will literally open it into Radium. And here on Radium, I can actually place a trade. I can just confirm that I'm happy with this particular address and then it will add it and then we can place a trade. Now, most Solana collections, especially the liquidity pool they create is on Radium anyway. So most of them will be able to trade on Radium. Some you can trade on Jupiter, but not all. And then sometimes other exchanges as well if the collection gets a lot bigger. Scroll down, there's usually an add on the right here, so you ignore that. These are the contract addresses for the pair for the actual contract itself, and then uh, burn addresses and things like that as well are all here. If you want to search for the ticket, you click on search on Twitter. Not useful now because we've got their Twitter account anyway, but if they didn't have their socials here in the top right, I like to search on Twitter by clicking on this. It will search for the ticker just to see if people have mentioned it. Maybe this company, they didn't want to pay the $300 to advertise here their social links in the top right-hand corner. So that's why it's good for you to check if you don't see that there. Here you can see a rocket symbol, red flag symbol, I ignore these. Sometimes I click one of these by mistake. So obviously if I'm clicking these by mistake, 
Um, you can't really go on them and usually in the telegram groups they just ask everybody in any collection to just go ahead and click the rocket button if it's a good collection or not so it, this is just kind of a waste of time don't don't bother with any of those they don't really warn you of anything if i pull this up i can see trades real time so this is literally somebody's just spent 263 dollars a few seconds ago buying and usually if you see a lot of buys coming in of large values then the price usually will pump I can filter all of these. This is why I love deck screen. It's so easy. I can literally filter by clicking on USD and I only want the collections over $100. I like to do that because I only want to see big ones here. I don't want to see every single person buying for like pennies or cents. Not interested in that because that's not going to make any difference in price. However, if here suddenly somebody buys for a thousand like two minutes ago or they sell for like, um, well, I'm trying to find a big transaction here, but maybe they sell a three thousand or four thousand dollars worth. That's significant. You're gonna see a sell-off, and very likely this red candle here. There would have been a lot of selling there, large amounts. You can see the amount in Seoul as well. Sometimes useful, uh, but again, I, I stick to US dollars personally. Um, and then you can actually see their wallet addresses here. Now, if you want to see all of their transactions, what I do sometimes is I hover over it first, so I can see what they bought and sold. By the way, this is a bot. So this one, you can see where they've done 151 transactions. What they are doing, more than likely, is buying and selling every single minute the exact same amount. So $600, $500, $600. And they're doing that to keep volume in the collection. And sometimes this is nice because it gets you on the trending tab on the top. A very advanced little bit of information I'm sharing with you. But yeah, there you go. Um, not a lot of people know that either. So sometimes they will just run um, uh, these bots, or it could be somebody manual as well, literally sit in there, buy 500, sell 500, buy 500, sell 500. So that wallet doesn't really gain or lose or make any profit or lose anything. They just do loads and loads of transactions. Here's another one. 300, nobody does 375 transactions and exactly breaks even unless they're doing this type of thing. That's what's going on. So there's a couple of wallets that are doing that here, which is kind of, you, do, you don't really want to see too much of that in a collection. A little bit fine, but you don't want to see too much of that. But again, I'm digressing. Let's get back to the point. So here you can see if, if somebody's made profit here. Let's scroll down and see if anybody sold for a little bit of profit. That's another, um, not really, probably not recently because obviously the price has been dipping. But if you do see somebody with a lot of profit, you can, what you can do is you can actually click on the icon here to the right, almost like an upside down funnel or something. And then it will only show that wallet's transactions. But what's really cool is it marks them on the chart. So you can see where they've been buying and selling. And the best sellers, and I like to include uh, myself in that, the best buyers and sellers, what we do is obviously we buy the lows, we buy early and stuff like that, but you won't see with my wallet, you'll see a buy, you won't just see a random sell somewhere high up. You'll see me selling throughout all the way up because I don't know where this is going to top out. I have my targets and stuff along the way, but it could keep pumping. So I sell little bits throughout because that's actually mathematically the best way for me to protect my position and maximize my profits. If I, w I don't sell along the way and I, I just wait to get those massive numbers, this could dump on me any second. I could lose all my profits. Don't want that. We want to gradually sell throughout. We'll get less ROI that way, but over 100 future trades, this is going to be the best for me and it's going to protect my trading account. So you'll see the best traders will something like that. They'll buy low, low, and then they'll sell all the way up on a pump. This particular trader. This is kind of random clueless buying and selling, if I'm honest. Anyway, let's go further down. So we can click on the icon again and click clear, and then that disappears and we go back to our normal thing. But remember, I've still got that USD filter of $100. Now, looking on the left here, nothing else interesting on this side. So that's pretty much all of the chart. So what we could do is we can actually move this out the way now. We can hide sidebar and then we can expand the chart and we can click on right, remove drawings. But if you want to draw, you click the paintbrush and then you can actually start drawing on it. You can draw a horizontal line, click this one and click on horizontal line and you can mark off important levels like 800,000, stuff like that. When you take an entry position into here, you can even mark where you took your entry position in case you lose track. So if you see price kind of coming back to there and you're a bit nervous and stuff and you want to get out for break even or a small loss, you can absolutely do that too. You have all of those options. Obviously here on the top left, you can change time frame. I prefer when I'm doing sniping to do a one second time frame. And the reason for that I've discussed in my videos is because even within a second or a few seconds, the price can move hundreds of thousands in market cap, which you have to be very careful about because you might be overpaying by 30% or um, selling out 
30% less than you could have sold out for. Now, 30%, yes, on meme coins may not be that much, but over like hundreds of thousands of trades, that's literally a lot of money. You could be uh, losing or gaining if you know what you're doing. I briefly mentioned it before, but basically across the top, you've got the trading, uh, trending, sorry, collections. And it's a lot of the usual names. And to be honest, the trending collections, I don't really go near because either they're already done in terms of pump or the ROI is just so small now that it's not even worth doing. For example, HODL was very popular recently, but probably still is. But you can see, yeah, it's kind of, it's gone now. It's kind of sold off. Um, and I, I doubt, to be honest, there'll be any, any kind of pump here and stuff. I drew, I drew this line here because I was having a look. Why was I having a look? Because sometimes I have this other strategy, it's called an exhaustion trade. And basically, sometimes when a, when a collection has been absolutely battered down, um, you get a lot of people selling, 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 and then the selling gets exhausted, and then you get a pump. And if this, I've got my line here, if this drops to 1 million, I will be looking for some certain technical signs. These are my own personal ones I've come up with, again, after watching hundreds and hundreds of charts. And what I'm looking for, if I see those signs, if I see those signs, it's not guaranteed that'll happen, but if I see those, sometimes you can get a nice little bounce to like three or four mil, and then it kind of dies off anyway. But this little bounce doesn't look like much, but one to four mil is like a 3x. Now, if you go back on the chart here, when thing, things were pumping and everybody was buying here, really excited at 10 mil. Um, so let's say even here, like at 7 mil, right? So, so, so you could call that a nice dip. You're buying the dip. And then it topped out at what, 14 to 16 mil? So that looks like an amazing trade. You bought the dip and stuff like that. But that's only a 2x at best you know, in between all of the wicks and stuff. And then you had to quickly sell because it was about to collapse. But weirdly, my trade, when the price has completely died, um, people are thinking, why the hell would you want to trade in here? The, the collection is completely destroyed. But if I get into profit quickly, and I, I watch it live on a second chart, so it quickly gets into profit, then I know, I'm, you know, the pressure's up. I can hold and wait and see what happens. And if it gets a tiny little pump, I only need a tiny pump. And I've made a 3x, which is actually a lot more than people we're making late into this pump. It's all about ROI. It's all about the, the market cap number going from one number to the next number. One million in market cap going to 10 million in market cap. So some of these massive collections that we see all the time, people talking about like dog with hat and stuff. Um, yeah, they're, they're great collections. I'm not saying I'm bearish. Like people are like, oh, why are you so bearish? I'm not bearish on it at all. It, it could go up. But why would I want to buy something at 230 market cap and see it go to 300 million market cap, which is an amazing move for that collection. But in terms of ROI, it might only be making me 20 or 30% for like a 1.3x. Why would I be interested in that? Where I could easily um, uh, degen into these shit collections, basically, where I could make 3x, 4x, 5x, 10x. So I hope that makes sense. It's all about ROI in this game. And the good thing about this compared to Dog with Hat, I might be waiting days or months with Dog with Hat. But with some of these, I could wait like an hour or two and I could have completed my flip. It's as easy as that. Obviously, here on the top left, you want to search for any collection that you've heard about. You can type it into here if you know the name or you can literally copy and paste the contract address into here as well. And it'll quickly find that for you. Hope these tips help. My comprehensive program when it comes to meme coin trading is the first link in the description below if you're interested. Thanks for listening.